Welcome to my channel. Now it's nearing the end of the garden room project and one of the things I needed to do was get a path to go all the way up to the garden room. Now we're in heavy clay and we've got a lot of trees. Clay and trees, they both have their own problems. First of all, clay is always moving and tree roots are everywhere and it sheds loads and loads of leaves. Mainly the trees behind me are all deciduous. So every autumn they give me tons and tons of ground cover that I need to clear. So whatever I do on the ground, I need to, need to be able to maintain it, blow the leaves off, clear it, and make sure it stays nice and tidy. That limits my choice. The ground conditions and the trees limits my choice. So I've decided to use a very simple method of creating a path, cost effectively, yet it will look absolutely beautiful. So what we've got here is a timber edge, which is basically mounted directly on the ground. The ground's super, super solid. So I'm not digging anything out, loosening anything up. I'm using a class four timber. Now what is class four timber? This means it's been treated and impregnated to be in ground contact, okay? It's not a typical treated timber. That won't do the job, but a class four timber will do the job, okay? So you can pop it on the ground and you can use it as a path edging. I've also used a slightly thicker one. Instead of using one which is about an inch or 25 millimeters, I'm using one which is nearly two inches. So more like a structural timber. This means it stays nice and straight. It will also take the pressure of the path and whatever we put on the other side of it. So the idea is we've popped these edges in and we've kept them parallel. So it's 1.2 meters wide. And that's because I can still get a small machine to travel up here like a small excavator between these timbers. And then what I do is I connect them all together, follow the contours, and then I use a really nice rod, a rebar. We drill the top and we bang it right down into that clay. And that acts like a pin to hold everything in place until I've backfilled a little bit on this side with topsoil and mulch. And on this side, I'm actually adding some topsoil to flatten out this garden and make the lawn a little bit more flat. The other benefit of this is I'm not affecting any roots. I'm riding over roots. In some cases, I've cut over the roots with a bit of clearance as well to give the roots a little bit of movement. On this side, I'm just gonna build a narrow path which is gonna go up the side. This is gonna be a wild flower meadow. This is the class four, comes in nice long lengths and we'll literally lay them out where we want them. We'll set it nice and true. We'll drill it, we'll put our pins in and we'll get it nice and straight and then we'll connect to the next one and move it on. Then we'll be barrowing up the MOT, putting it on top of this clay, which is super, super solid and hard. As I say, we're not scraping anything off. We're not disturbing it. And the good thing about the um, self-binding gravel and the MOT, it will always sort of work with nature. It will just, you know, move around. And with the self-binding gravel, you can agitate it and redress the top surface as well. And that's it. It's super, super simple, something anyone could do. Absolutely amazing.
So I have 12 and a half tons of Breeden and it looks absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to get on and start moving it and using it. A couple of things you need to remember about Breeden is the fact that you've got to make sure you don't let it dry out or you don't let the rain wash the fines away. So you really want to get on and use it. And if you're not going to be using it for a while, stick a sheet over it and just keep the moisture in it. You can wet it down again or mix it back up with a machine and it's fine. What we're looking for is to grab it into a ball and it stays nice and firm, a bit like a sandcastle on the beach. So that's it. I'm going to get on and do some work. Like any job, you need to have the right equipment. And in my case, I'm planning to do most of this single-handedly. I've got some help coming tomorrow, but today I'm just gonna find my way and get all of this material sort of gradually moved into position. But the key result with breeding is managing the right amount of material. So don't go and tip it all out and not pull it around and move it around. Work in sections and work your way back. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick an area, lay it in, I'm gonna get it to the right depths, I'm gonna screed it out, and then I'm gonna compact it, okay? So the tools I've got, I've obviously got a machine here which can carefully move the gear. I've got my small one and a half ton machine to load it. And then we've got things like rakes, shovels, brooms, brushes. And I've also made myself a screeding board. This is the one I use for the MOT that's underneath, which is put down first. This one I'll adjust to get the depth exactly where I want it. And then once I've got say about 70, 75 mil of breed and screeded nice and flat, that's when we'll compact. And where I come to an edge that I want to start and stop, I just use a section of timber like shuttering through there and I'll work to that. So yes, that's what I'm going to get on and do. And as I say, the weather's really nice. Even if we have a shower, it's actually in my favor because we need to use water for when we compact it, getting all of the fines to come to the top to um, bind it all and that's the key one of the key results with this but um, i'll show you a bit of that as we go we've had the delivery and it was pretty successful the lorry drivers of the uk are some of the best in the world you saw that taking that huge truck four axles one of the biggest ridges on the road through the gates up towards the house without touching even the curb stones tipping it in a fantastic position for me where i've been able to pick it off load my dumper and move on We've put a couple of boards down, so when I come down on that small machine, I can spin around on this board because we've had rain, we've got wind, and it's important that I don't keep digging up this surface. Those tracked dumpers are fantastic, providing the ground is nice and hard, or they'll just dig themselves a hole. So I've got a board this end, I've got a board the other end. Now the idea is we're gonna try and work with, let's say today, 20 square meters of Breeden, which is around about two and a half, three tons, because we've got a large area to do at the top. We can't get a large compacting roller in, so we're gonna be using a compactor plate. And for that, we've gotta make sure you go over it several times, and we just need to allow enough time for that. The actual path between the boards is much easier because I can screed it exactly to those boards, compact it down very evenly, and that's it, okay? So we're gonna crack on and get that done. The idea is we're gonna get this laid to an approximate depth of 70 millimeters. I've got a couple of simple rails here. So I've got some 20 mil ply and a bit of two inch timber, if you like, or some 50 mil timber. So that's roughly 70 mil. I could lay that pretty much anywhere and rule off to it. This is for screeding and plastering, it's the ideal thing. But before that, we just need to get it roughed in with a rake and also my screeding board here, which is ideal. But the idea is you don't want to separate the fines from the stone too much. So don't use the rake like a rake, turn it over and we'll use the back. So basically I'll start down there and I'll start pulling this around into position. It's such a nice material to use. It's so uniform. And at the moment the consistency is ace because it's been a bit damp. 
Today's a bit damp, the sun's not on it, so it's actually really nice. I'll give you an example of where I'd use the screeding board. Stick one at the side here, like that, and you can put everything over to it to start with. And you can see that you're gonna get it to the depth that you want. Then we just pull it out, obviously. Do the same on the other side, and then we can work to that. So I'm gonna spread all that out, get it all ready. I'll probably get all of this area done down to the beginning of the path. That'll be our aim for today. And that should do us. to get the top bit done and we've done really well if there was the perfect day for laying breeding golden amber gravel i reckon this has got to be it we have got this really nice fine mist of rain coming down not the kind of rain you just can't stand you just want to be inside but it's keeping the material exactly how i want it so it's keeping it really nice and moist now we're on to the easy bit of the job believe it or not because we've got our solid uh, path edges here that will give us all of the guidance we need. So all we need to do now is bring the material in, screed it exactly to this using our screed tool here. So what we've got here is two little carriers which sit over the edge and we just literally pull it through here and that sets it exactly right. Now, breed and say that you must, if you're using path edging, make sure the gravel is flush. That's because the water needs to come off now if you look down our bar you'll see that it's got a curve in it the reason it's got a quite a slight curve is to enable the path to have a slight camber that's not that necessary in my case because of the fact that the gradient of the land runs away and i've put the edges so every now and then any rain running down will run off the side then it'll run off the side further down so it won't go all the way to the bottom it won't make it to the bottom like a string and that's quite important because what you don't want is the water when it's heavy rain to wash a rut in it because it will if you've seen how streams get bigger 
in storms this is exactly the same thing so that's it we're going to get just a little bit further down here tonight we're going to compact this and we're going to make it super smooth like we've got at the top there and then call it a day and then tomorrow we'll start again We've got the path right down to well over halfway and it's, um, it's taken less time than I thought but we've got all kinds of things in our favour. For example, we've got this really nice edge which forms exactly the right thickness for us using our screening bar. But what we need to do now, even though we've compacted it, we've been over it several times, we've been up and down and up and down and it's compacted beautifully. But this, the special thing about the breed and golden amber gravel is the fact that it's got naturally occurring, occurring marl. Now marl is obviously like the fines and it actually bonds itself together, but you do need to introduce a bit of water. Now in the case of doing a road or a major path where you've got the space, you can do a drive on rolling compactor plate, okay? So you'd go up and down it with that then you'd turn off the compaction and you'd introduce water. A lot of these um, rollers have a tank and they'll put water on the rollers and up and down you go. And in some cases, when it's hot, someone will have to feed the roller with a hose. Now in our case, we've been lucky. The material has a really good moisture content due to the fact that it's not too sunny. Uh, we're using it fresh effectively from the delivery and we've had a fine mist of rain for like 24 hours, which is absolutely perfect. But what we are going to do is take our hose and we're going to create our own shower. We're going to literally saturate it over and then we're going to re-go over it with the compactor plate, but we're only going to use it on a very sort of gentle setting. We're not going to go mad. We're going to go all the way over it and we're going to really get those fines sort of bonded to the top. So we'll go over it, as I say, we'll mist it off like a rain shower what we don't want to do is direct any water straight at it but this is exactly enough you know we're going to go over it like this and then we'll go over it what we're looking for is some sort of finish which looks a little bit like freshly laid concrete you can see now that i can i can see by the surface over there that there's enough water as long as we're not directing this directly on that is absolutely perfect as i say then we'll go over it compact it the other thing as well, obviously we have a lot of wind at the moment, it's just coming into autumn, so the leaves are falling and these little culprits as well. So we are, as we're laying this, as we're tipping it out and spreading it out, we're making sure that we don't get any of these lovely little green acorns in that because these hardy little fellows will grow absolutely anywhere. Okay, so that's another thing to remember. And weeds, if after you've done this, weeds may grow or try to grow in this um, surface as well. They're incredible little things, weeds, but you don't pull them out, you treat them, okay? The idea is you treat them, otherwise you pull them out, you'll create a little hole, and the hole can erode if you don't deal with it. And that's all you probably need to know. And moss, we will get moss on this again, we'll just have to treat that as well as we go. Right then, let's get on, get all that done, watered and compacted before we finish the outside bit. We've totally finished the new path and um, I came into doing this thinking to myself, this will be the first time I've ever laid a self-binding gravel. That was one of the reasons I really researched the products and the products that are available and I became familiar with the breed and golden amber gravel and this is exactly what we went for. So summing up, it has been an absolute dream to lay, okay? But here are the key points that you need to remember. If you're not able to use a large compacting roll of the drive on type or even the walk behind type, then you're gonna do it with a compacting plate like you see me do in this video. The thing is with a compacting plate, it needs to be over 75 kilograms. There are lighter versions on the market, but to get the compaction depth that you need to get the marl with the water to come up and set, 
is really important that you don't overdo the thickness. So you need to be around about 75 millimeters when you're screeding, and then you need to compact back to 50 millimeters, and you'll get that with a compacting plate over 75 kilograms. So that's those two things you need to remember. The next thing you need to remember is that you need to leave the surface to cure, to set. It's completely natural. There's nothing in it. There's no chemicals in it to do that. And we finished yesterday. We compacted it with the water and we did many passes before we did the water. And we got an amazing finish, as you can see here. Then we had a whole night of heavy rain. And the most amazing thing is, I was thinking this is going to go badly wrong, but it hasn't. It's done exactly what it says it's going to do. It self scarifies. What that means is that the surface will just have a nice little loose layer of gravel or dust, and that will carry on through its life as well, which gives it that nice crunch underfoot. So yes, I'm super, super happy I've chosen this. Um, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a breeze to blow the leaves off. We've already had to clear it today because there were so many leaves and branches that fell overnight in that heavy rain. The lay of my land all runs downhill. We've also got a hidden land drain all the way along the side of the building, which goes to our outflow. And then this path runs at around about one in 40 all the way to the end and onto the driveway. The first point of drainage needs to be roughly five meters away. In my case, because I've kept my edging slightly higher, I've cut a series of nice little slots there to allow the water out where it naturally runs to. So that's how we've uh, done that. You can either drill holes through your edging, or alternatively, like me, you can cut these nice slots. Every few meters as the water runs down the path, it will leave by these little slots. You can also do this by drilling holes. That will just spill into the flower bed. That will encourage the water to leave at different points down the path and therefore you won't erode the path away unnecessarily or have any standing water. We want to avoid that. And if you have got a very level site and you can't get the water away, then every five meters from the first point where you start, you need to put a slot drain, a channel drain or something like that in to ensure the water leaves the path. I'm super, super happy with the outcome and it just looks absolutely beautiful. I've got a contemporary house. This is quite often seen in palaces, and national trust places, and I can see why they've used it for many decades because it really, really works. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Any questions about the product from my perspective, about the installation, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments. And also, um, if you're gonna do it, good luck.